This video is sponsored by Longevity Technology. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we'll be talking all about senotherapeutics. So we'll be addressing questions such as, what are senolytics? How do senolytics work? What's the difference between senolytics and senomorphics? And what current human clinical trials are assessing the efficacy of different senolytics for different age-associated diseases? And we'll also take a look at what we can expect in the next few years in terms of research in this area and other areas of focus that we still need to understand a bit better. So you could think of this video as your ultimate guide to senotherapeutics. And so an obvious beginning for the ultimate guide would be a definition of what senotherapeutics is. And so senotherapeutics refers to the development of therapeutic strategies to target cellular senescence that could have benefits for ageing and age-related diseases. And the reason that it's thought that they have benefits is due to the current idea that cellular senescence and the increase in senescent cells of age are contributing to ageing and age-related diseases. And so the first concept that you need to understand for this ultimate guide is what is cellular senescence and what are senescent cells? Well, senescent cells are cells that have undergone cellular senescence, but that doesn't really tell you too much. Cellular senescence is a cell state that occurs in response to a variety of different stresses. So that could be DNA damage, it could be replicative stress from replicating too many times, and shortening telomeres, oxidative stress, or oncogenic activation. And so irrespective of the inducers of cellular senescence, there are some common outcomes. The first key response is a cell cycle arrest, so the cell stops dividing, and this arrest is permanent. And the second shared response is the secretion of a variety of different factors referred to as the senescence-associated secretory phenotype, or the SASP as it's more commonly referred to. And so the interesting thing with senescent cells is that their biological consequences could be seen as beneficial or deleterious. And so in terms of the beneficial outcomes, cellular senescence is thought to be a tumour suppressive mechanism because it prevents a cell that's got some DNA damage or some oncogene being expressed from further dividing and replicating, which could eventually form a tumour. Moreover, senescent cells are thought to be beneficial for wound healing and regeneration, as well as playing a key role in embryonic development. However, senescent cells are also thought to have deleterious biological consequences. These include, kind of paradoxically, tumour development, whereby the secretion of these different inflammatory markers can generate an environment that's favourable for tumour growth. More on from this, chronic inflammation of these different inflammatory factors could be driving the ageing process along with different age-related diseases. And another deleterious biological consequence is if stem cells become senescent. And so stem cells are cells that can regenerate and are thought to be important for repair and replacement of cells in different tissues. And so if they become senescent and stop dividing, it might limit the tissue regenerative potential. And so to add a little bit to the complexity, we've spoken about this secretory phenotype being deleterious for potentially driving chronic inflammation and different age-associated diseases, but the same secretion of these different factors is also thought to drive immune surveillance, whereby the factors can activate immune cells and bring them in to clear senescent cells and get rid of them. And so this brings us back to whether or not targeting senescent cells could have therapeutic potential. And so this brings us back to the term senotherapeutics. And so far, there could be considered three different branches of senotherapeutics. These include senolytics, senomorphics, and then lastly, ways of activating the immune system or modifying the immune system to specifically target senescent cells. So exploiting the body's natural immune system to get rid of senescent cells. So firstly, let's take a look at senolytics. So senolytics describe pharmacological agents that can selectively eliminate senescent cells. And so the key word here to notice is selective, as the idea behind senolytics is that they kill senescent cells and not your normal healthy cells. So how do senolytics work? Well, various senolytic strategies have been developed using a combination of different in vitro models of senescence and in vivo animal models. And the different compounds that have been identified so far seem to exploit the fact that senescent cells frequently upregulate 
genes that repress apoptosis, which is a process in a cell that causes the cell to die. It's a form of cell death. And so senescent cells are very anti-cell death. They just kind of persist about secreting stuff, basically. And so the rationale behind different senolytics is to inhibit the activity of these anti-apoptotic proteins and to instead drive the senescent cells into apoptosis. And so this is where the selectivity comes from because only the senescent cells have this high expression of these anti-apoptotic proteins. And so in normal cells, it won't really have an impact. At least that is what we hope is the case. And so this figure here from a recent review article nicely summarises how we think current senolytics are acting in the cell, as in which different proteins it's targeting to cause that senescent cell to enter cell death. And so you'll notice that there are many different types of senolytics, including natural compounds such as quercetin and fisetin. And so these are both natural flavonoids that can be found in different foods. And it's interesting to point out as well that quercetin seems to act most effectively as a senolytic when combined with another drug, dasatinib. And another thing that's worth mentioning is why are we looking for senolytics in the first place? And that comes from previous work that have used genetic models whereby they can eliminate senescent cells in mice. And when they do that in naturally aged mice, it's been shown in studies to improve physical function and increase lifespan. And so going back to senolytic agents, the idea is to use drugs or natural compounds that can eliminate senescent cells to circumvent the use of genetic engineering to remove senescent cells for humans. And so many clinical trials have already been initiated to assess the efficacy of these different senolytic agents for the treatment of different diseases. And so far, it's already been shown that the combination of dasatinib and quercetin has been able to reduce senescence markers in a phase 1 clinical trial in patients with diabetic kidney disease and idiopathic pulmonary disease. And so as you can see in this table here, they have now entered into phase 2 clinical trials in addition to many other senolytic compounds that are also in phase 1 trials. You'll also notice though that many of these senolytic compounds have so far only made it to preclinical models, so using mice as in vivo models. And I also wanted to point out these galactose conjugated senolytic prodrugs, which act slightly differently as senolytic agents because instead of targeting different proteins already in the cell, they deliver a cytotoxic agent within a nanocarrier that only gets degraded when there is galactosidase activity. And so senescent cells have high activity of the so-called senescence-associated beta-galactosidase, and so the compound would only get broken down in senescent cells where the cytotoxic agent would then get released and then kill the senescent cells selectively. And so that's definitely interesting work to keep an eye on. So how are senolytics different to senomorphics? Well, as an alternative to killing senescent cells, Senomorphics are proposed to act by limiting the detrimental impacts of senescent cells, largely through modulating the senescence-associated secretory phenotype, so in a way trying to reduce the amount of inflammatory factors that are being secreted. And so the way to do this is to inhibit the proteins in a cell that drive the expression of these different SASP components. And so one of the key proteins involved in this process is the mammalian target of rapamycin, mTOR. And so unsurprisingly, rapamycin, which inhibits mTOR and has also been shown to extend lifespan in both male and female mice, is thought to achieve that in part by reducing the inflammatory phenotype of senescent cells. And so again, we have a nice figure demonstrating how rapamycin is inhibiting mTOR. Another agent that's worth mentioning is metformin, which is thought to as well have some senomorphic potential by inhibiting the action of NF-kappa-B, which is another key protein that is thought to mediate the upregulation of different genes that make up the senescence-associated secretory phenotype. And so the reason that I mentioned both rapamycin and metformin is that they've already been approved for immunosuppression and for type 2 diabetes, respectively. And so this table that I'm showing now shows other senomorphics and their action as well as their current clinical trial status that have in most cases either been approved for different diseases or are being tested in preclinical models. 
So ignoring the fact that these xenomorphic compounds may have a multitude of effects on cells and within mice or within our bodies, given the definition of xenomorphics to inhibit the pro-inflammatory SASP factors, it could be considered at the moment that xenolytics may be more beneficial than xenomorphics. And there are three key reasons to support this. One, the use of senolytics could be used as an intermittent strategy, or as Dr. James Kirkland, Director on Aging at the Mayo Clinic, likes to refer to as the hit and run strategy. And so basically, it means that you could use senolytics every so often, as opposed to the potential continuous administration of senomorphic agents, where repeated treatments would probably be necessary. The second advantage is that removing the senescent cells eliminates the possibility of senescence bypass. So that refers to a senescent cell that can then escape senescence. And often that's due to the accumulation of mutations. And so if it can escape senescence by having more mutations, it's likely to then cause tumorigenesis. So that's not good. And then the last benefit is the fact that so far there hasn't really been a direct demonstration that the SASP is actually driving aging related defects. Basically just saying how it's currently quite challenging to separate the effect of inhibiting the SASP from senolytics when they use different transgenic mouse models. But it is also worth mentioning that it's not known whether senolytics could have detrimental consequences, especially when used in advanced stage when the organism, or, or humans in that case, have a higher abundance of senescent cells. Moreover, it's not known if there are any detrimental consequences to long-term use of senolytics, but that's also why we have clinical trials in the works. And so the last strategy is to activate the immune system to, to remove senescent cells. And so basically to exploit the fact that organisms have an intrinsic senolytic system that we refer to as immunosurveillance. Moreover, it's possible that one of the reasons why senescent cells accumulate in aged tissues is due to a decline in this immunosurveillance. And so boosting the natural immune mechanisms of senescent cell surveillance may have therapeutic potential in years to come, since this is where a lot of active research is being done at the moment. Now, it's also likely that other interventions such as caloric restriction, fasting and exercise could also have an impact on senescent cell clearance or reducing the SASP. However, at the moment, how these different interventions impact the number or activity of senescent cells has not been meticulously studied and in part that's due to the continued limitations in being able to define senescent cells and also identify clearly when they're removed from the body. I recently spoke about a research paper that identified enoxylipin, which could be used as a strategy to identify senescent cell clearance, which could help in understanding these different interventions further. But again, it's something that is currently being heavily researched. So yes, there are definitely challenges to senotherapeutics, in particular, making sure that it's both safe and effective. But to quote from the end of this review article, the next few years we'll see whether its promise is fulfilled. Exciting times lie ahead. And I agree, I think exciting times do lie ahead. So with that, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this week's video, Longevity Technology. Longevity Technology delivers high quality daily news and insights on research investments and technologies that extend health span and lifespan. Find the link to their website in the description. So I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.